Yo, people, welcome back to On Track GP. Your host to do the most and never Chris Matisse in the building. I'm joined by my brother, Joe. How are you doing, bro? How are you feeling? Mate, as a Ferrari fan, I'm buzzing. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable qualifying session. A lot of drama and some surprises for me because I wasn't expecting some of these, these final positions. But I do want to roll it straight out, out the gates for you because you are a Ferrari fan and that is a brilliant performance. How are you feeling just on the back of what was almost a pole, let's be honest. Like, you know, final stages, it was looking like it could potentially be a little bit of yeah. a split, but not quite. Yeah, man, just just under five hundredths off uh, max. But that shows the levels that Ferrari have uh, seen to be stepping forward. You know, two weeks ago in Canada, they, they got their strategy right yeah. and, and actually ended up having a really decent race from a poor starting position. And this week, here they are, they've qualified uh, Charles in second and, and my boy Carlos in third. We're loving that. That is yep. huge. And I'll tell you what is so significant about it is that they seem a lot quicker than mm. the Mercedes and the Aston Martin. Kind of out of nowhere. I really wasn't expecting that. Uh, we know it's a good circuit for them. Obviously, Charles had an amazing uh, race last year and won it. And Carlos would have put up some decent numbers last year as well if his car hadn't exploded and set on fire. But, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, mate, I'm absolutely ecstatic with that. And it makes that second place battle more interesting because Ferrari, are they back now? Are they yeah. back? It's a question. It's a question for sure. I mean, I am quite disappointed on my side with the performance from from Mercedes. Obviously, Hamilton finishing there in fifth um, and, and Norris splitting the two. Um, mm. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant again from him to be in that McLaren. We were kind of saying in the preview that he is quite clearly the stronger driver out of him. Piastri, will he be looking for a move? If he keeps putting in performances like this, then he is going to be, you know, he's going to be probably the first driver up on the list for most of the top teams if they're looking for someone to, to move up the ranks. But in first position, Red Bull, talk to me. What's what's your saying? <laughs> I tell you what, mate, it's, uh, it's typical Max and terrible Checo from this yeah. qualifying, man. Like, it was inevitable almost that Max at, at the Red Bull home circuit was going to go and, and do the work. And it looked close for a second if he hadn't gone out and put out that. Because some people were saying, oh, he doesn't need to go out. He again doesn't need to, yeah. And this is why you always have to in this sport, just to make sure. If he doesn't go and push to the last, you know, the last ends of the earth to get that extra, extra, squeeze out the extra speed in those tyres. Next thing you know now, he's, he's, he's actually not even in the top two. Yeah, correct. He's not. He wouldn't have been on the front row. And mate, it's, it's, we do this every week. It's doing the basics right, and Max Verstappen has done the basics right and put the correct numbers up. Uh, on the other end, uh, Sergio Perez went up three times in Q2 and put it outside the lines every time. Do, oh. do the basics right. Keep the car on the track. What is that? Is that a lack of concentration or, or what? Because that's he's an experienced driver. He shouldn't really be making those errors, and that's Me, what's cost him because he was going to be, you know, really up there as well with the result. Yeah, I agree. I think at this point, what it is for Checo is he's in his own head. This is the fourth race in a row. He's not made it to Q3. That is inexcusable. In it's embarrassing. Level. It's embarrassing. Inexcu I don't, it is. It's embarrassing. It's, it, there's, there's, you could use every negative word out there because it's, it's just not good enough, mate. Like, it's crazy. And, that, and, and again, there's no... Um, Red Bull are kind of playing the card of, oh, they've been too strict with the uh, uh, with the the um, whether you're keeping it in the lines or not keeping it in the lines. But as Lando Norris came out and said after, they've got the quickest car. What are they complaining about? And he's yeah. completely right. Lando Norris is nowhere near in as quick a car as that. And he's starting on the second row. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, I mean, look, I think inside that Red Bull, there's going to be over the next few weeks, maybe even tonight, they're going to be sitting there having conversations about is Sergio Perez letting the team down? And I'm not going to answer that, but you draw your own conclusions. He is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. Be, I'm gonna answer it. I am so disappointed. I think you know. A month ago, when I was speaking to you about this, and we actually even did predictions, right, for preview. Did somebody have him in in in, in potential podium positions? Who was it? I can't remember. I don't know if it was you or me or no. Actually, did nobody have him? No, I don't think any of us. I don't think wow, any of us nobody had him. Top, Usually, top three. I thought I, I thought Abby did for a second. I was about to send shots. <laughs> does, like, Abby does love him, so like, I'm yeah, not yeah, surprised. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. And now he starts down in you know P, what P fifteen. How is he? What's your expectations for his race before we move on? Because obviously Max to lead the way to win. You know the two Ferraris. You'll be hoping they finish both in podium spots. They need mm -hmm. those double double points. What about Perez? Where can where can Perez realistically? What can you see from points? Him? He's. I mean. <laughs> God, he if he doesn't get, get points, points, then bring Ricardo in for the next race. Right, bring Ricardo in for Sunday, mate. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think realistically he he can get a top six finish because we know the car is so quick. And 
his pace was actually good in qualifying. Yeah, it was. It was. He, you know, he would. He it, with with the times that he was putting up, he would have been up and about the front row. But it's this it's this confidence issue with him. So if he can get his head sorted. By the mm. way, we should probably caveat this with we did do a, a really quick video uh, yesterday that Sergio wasn't feeling well, missed media uh, on Thursday, and so is there a bit of a sort of um, not hangover not in an context. alcohol sense but you know a hangover in terms of is he still feeling unwell from yesterday yeah. is that bled into debt to into today i don't know um but yeah matt, look max is going to go and win this thing probably um but the one little thing with that is that he doesn't have the defense of his teammate and he won't have the defense of his teammate and he will have two quick cars on this circuit particularly quick on this circuit really going if we're going to ever have a moment to go and it. try and get a win yeah. they can two to one him and that first first, first corner they need to be on it first corner really oh mate well you get it's interesting in austria you get that first corner but then you get that incredibly long uphill straight into turn two and then turn three uh which is very very quick as well so that if, if it's not even in the first corner something could happen up in that turn i mean turn two is hardly even a turn it's about three <laughs> degrees to the left but then into that heavy right hander for turn three it's there's, there, there really could be quite a lot going on at that uh, at the early portion of the track. And he mm. won't have the defence of his teammate. Well, there's no way Sergio is going to be anywhere near in those first no. three turns. So who knows? No. Well, I mean, Max is used to defending without his teammate at this point this season. So he'll, Very true. he'll, he'll have the experience on his side, on that side. But I'm looking yeah. forward to the fight. The two McLarens are way split, obviously, as we said, with Norris in fourth and obviously um, Piastri all the way down in 13th. Hamilton split with the Mercedes. Russell out in... Q2 as well. How do you how do you feel about that? I mean, Russell in recent weeks not not strong. Yeah, I'm, I'm very surprised by that. I kind of thought Mercedes would have. I thought Lewis. I mean, I think Lewis at the moment is doing a better job in that car than George's mm. over the last sort of month or two. Mm. Uh, but I really thought the, the the circuit would suit them better under the sort of quick corners. We we know that suits the Mercedes car. So I, just, I don't know whether it's a confidence thing with George, but I actually expected Lewis to be up there, maybe even on the front row. Um, this weekend, but he starts from the third row. We'll, we'll just have to sort of see how it plays out under race pace. Look, they've got another qualifying session tomorrow and a race tomorrow and a race on Sunday. So there's so much action still to happen. And there's, you know, they've only had the one practice session. But I expected Mercedes and moving on, I actually expected Aston Martin to be quicker. And the, the headline under Aston Martin is Lance Stroll has outqualified Fernando Alonso. This is the second time. Who was expecting that? It's it's outrageous. I'm not gonna lie. After all the slander, <laughs> yeah, mate, you went, this, this preview. If you haven't watched this preview, watch it because Matisse goes on at Lance Stroll for honestly, it must have been about three and a half minutes, <laughs> just slagging him off. And then Lance Stroll's obviously watched it and gone, "Now nah, I'm gonna show Matisse. I'm gonna show yeah, you Matisse, are, mate. You can have that. You can hold that. Good. To, it is good to see though because if Aston Martin are gonna are gonna challenge and. Stroll almost as a confidence booster does need to be sometimes out qualifying his teammate, which he's mm. done. Um, obviously, Russell, this is back to back because in the Canadian Grand Prix, I think he finished um, 19th, was it? DNF, was it actually? Yeah, he DNF. So I think it was 19th. I think it was 19th. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with Sargent as well. So yeah, looks like a long day at the office potentially for Russell. Yeah. Um, obviously, like you mentioned with Stroll out qualifying Alonso Hulkenberg, really far ahead of Magnussen again. You've We've been alluding to it slightly that Hulkenberg is is showing his stuff in this in this yeah, season. Well, it was he eleven yeah. places ahead or something if his team yeah. in the same car? I mean, Hulkenberg yeah. is fierce. He is on one this season. Mm. He is putting up some serious times and some serious numbers, particularly in qualifying. Like he's just clearly feeling that car under the really quick, you know, low fuel, high um, speedy tires conditions. He's yeah. doing an, an incredible job and kind of like. Flying under the radar, like we talked a lot about a Albon bit. last week, obviously doing a phenomenal job. Uh, yeah, finishing seventh, like out of this world, and we'll get to Albon in a second. But Hulkenberg is just like consistently, particularly recently, consistently doing great qualifying. Hasn't quite been able to take it into the race weekends, but if he could do another qualifying session like this tomorrow, he'd have a serious chance of a point or two in the sprint. Yeah, so, who knows? Al yeah, and then you have Albon in that top ten, Gasly as well, Ocon twelfth. Mm -hmm. I think this is kind of where Alpine just kind of live now, isn't it? In this kind of area of, of yeah. the grid. Uh, unfortunately for them the, the leapfrogging of Aston Martin really has pushed them down the pecking order this season um, Piastri, Bottas, Perez, Sonoda all down there as well um, and right at the back we've got a couple of rookies in Sargent and De Vries and obviously Magnussen to split the two any any shocks in terms of just outside of obviously the speed of the Merck and, and Red Bull any other drivers that could potentially move up the grid tomorrow well we know that Al Albon's tyre um, control is incredible we're expecting a two-stop 
uh, tomorrow. But it's Alex Albon. He might go out on a set of hard tyres, do 70 laps on the hards, come in and pit, pit on the softs and, you know, somehow <laughs> pick a point. You never know with, with Alex. And starting in 10th as well, again, phenomenal um, from him. I think Piastri will be looking, will, will be taking, even though he's, he's not made it out of Q2, Piastri will be thinking, look, if Lando's going and putting up fourth, I can go and make something happen in the race and maybe again in the qualifying for the sprint tomorrow. So I think Piastri could look to do something. And clearly the upgrades that McLaren are really starting to kick on. And I'll tell you who's going to be nervous about that. Ryan Reynolds' new team, Alpine. Mm. They're going to be nervous this week this, and just generally for the rest of the season because McLaren are really starting to make it tick now. I'm glad you mentioned that because Alpine are now looking behind them, not ahead of them. If, yeah. you're, if you're if you're really looking at it, like you said, I mean, I, I was looking at them as the season goes on. Can they close in on, you know, can they close in on Aston Martin? Can they close in on Ferrari, on, on Mercedes? But now it is McLaren that's starting to push. Who's that? Push their, oh my God. Their elbow. It's, yeah, it's the Lando elbows Norris. are coming out and it's Lando <laughs> Norris. Exactly. It's Lando Norris. It's a great driver partnership that they have at McLaren. And Lando Norris is really, I just hope now after all of this, and we're going to come to the end of this preview, last time Lando Norris was in a great position, it went horribly wrong on the Sunday. I don't want that to happen again. Let's see a good full race from Lando Norris actually being able to kind of stick in that kind of area of the field and, and move through the race and, and then strategy can come into it and, and et cetera, decision-making, but not um, unfortunate um, circumstances, hopefully. So I'm looking forward to seeing Lando Norris actually in that position for a lot longer than, than last time. Um, I agree. Your your predictions before we wrap up now that we have the, the qualifying, uh, obviously the sprint race to come as well. There's a lot going yeah. on. Yeah, we've got, we we got a whole Saturday. We're covering that as well. We're going, uh, uh, we'll, we'll be live for the sprint uh, race tomorrow. Yes, mm -hmm. tomorrow, Saturday. Uh, I can't see any situation where Max doesn't go and win. And I feel like I end every qualifying race by saying that. Uh, I think he'll, he'll, he'll get his foot down nice and early, hold those two Ferrari guys off and drive away. And, and to be completely honest with you, Ferrari, I think there's going to be an element of let's think about second and third rather than really try and, unless they get ahead of Max in the first couple of corners, I think realistically they're going to go, let's try and get ourselves a double podium here. Uh, and I think they're absolutely capable of that. So I'm going, to, I'm going to go for the order that it's in now. Max first, yeah. Charles second and Carlos taking home third place. Well, there you go. Guys, that's the predictions there. For me, I just need, you know, Hamilton to get on the podium and we'll see what Russell can do. Go on, um, give me a three. Give me a three. Give me a three predictions. For Verstappen, I'm going to go Leclerc and I'm going to go Hamilton to get ahead of Sainz. <laughs> and Norris. Yeah, okay. Fair. And, well, and I yeah, I think, Norris, I think Norris will naturally drop down, I would expect. If he doesn't, then what a performance that will be from him. <laughs> um, guys, make sure you smash up the lights. Make sure you subscribe. We will see you tomorrow for the sprint race. And then obviously the race on Sunday. And listen, we've got a lot of drama ahead of us, I'm sure. So let's see what happens. Until then, big up yourselves. In a bit, people. Peace.